So I'm going to talk about 36. 36 is an enzyme, and for the scientific audience here, it has two enzymatic activity. It's an NAD dependent enzyme, meaning that it's using NAD, which is, has an important role in the regulating our lifespan. And in, as the effect of NAD, it can either do deacetylation or deacetylation of other protein, means that it's removed the acetyl group from other protein, or another activity. It can act as more ADP ribosine transferase, so it's take the ADP ribose and connect it to another protein and regulate the activity. Celsius is involved in many activities within the cells. Many of these uh, that I'm going to show you are involved in finding them. For example, it's involved in DNA repair, in glucose metabolism, and by regulating glucose metabolism, it's prevent or block cancer, act as tumor suppressor because it's a block that the devour effect. It's uh, involved in dietary restriction. We show that under dietary restriction, the color restrictions that extend lifespan, the level, the level of 36 increase. It's involved in maintaining, maintaining the telomere length, prevent inflammation, also in embryonic development. If you have a uh, homozygote mutation for 36, it's embryonic vital in human. In monkeys, you die two hours after birth. In mice, when you don't have 36, you develop premature aging phenotype, you die very early after four, four weeks. Today I'm going to show you evidence or results of that about the roles of cell 6 in aging. Within all of the cell 6 activity that I just described you, most of them, cell 6 act as a deacetylase, meaning that it's removed the acetyl group, in most of the case from the histone and regulate transcription. So as I just told you a few years ago, we showed that under the diet restriction, calorie restriction, or even under short fasting, intermediate fasting, the levels of cell 6 increase. And this suggests to us that if we can increase the level of cell 6, and maybe cell 6 is involved in aging, then we can get the same effect just by creating mice that will overexpress cell 6 in each tissue of the body and mimicking the effect of calorie restriction. We decided to follow what's happening if you overexpress 36 in mice to metabolism and to aging. And the way that we did it, we generated the mice that called Moses. Moses for mice overexpressing exogenous 36. It's a transgenic mice that have higher level of 36 exactly like in calorie restriction. And we started to investigate what's happening in these mice. We published in a set of papers that once you overexpress 36, this is one of the papers that we published recently, if you are in male mice, you live 30% longer in average. This means that some of the mice live in even 50% longer. In human terms, it means that instead of, a, instead of a live up to age 19, age 19, now you live up to age 120. In female, we extend the lifespan of these mice by 50%. And now we're trying to understand what was the difference. I know it sounds like a much bigger question. What is the difference between female and male, at least in regarding to regulating of lifespan? It's not only that we're able to extend life, but we've also been able to extend healthy life. This means that when we follow the biochemistry of the blood, the maintain biochemistry of the blood exactly like young mice, we follow tumors, there was delay in the appearance of tumor. Some of the tumors, tumor types did not appear at all. If we follow inflammation, it's block age-dependent inflammation. So plenty of phenotype that because of cell 6 overexpression, we were able to delay or actually block once we overexpress 36. And one of the phenotypes was when we took the mice and fed them high fat diet, even for half a even for half a of year, they didn't develop obesity-related phenotype. 
One of the main phenotypes, I'll uh, try to speak faster because now I realize it's, uh, I still have only five minutes. One of, one of the main phenotypes of aging is called Friday or the Friday syndrome. I think all of us know what is the Friday syndrome. If you think about all individuals. I didn't you, understand that. <laughs> Yes, I have a Neither do I. <laughs> Fight is a symptom that characterizes in the, all the, almost 30% of individuals above age 80, 5 to 10% of individuals above age 65, and you can see the main characterization of fighting, its weakness, slow walking, the, the, the reports that have low level of physical activities are exhausted, and they lose weight even without any diet. If you think about all individuals, you imagine immediately you will figure out what is frailty about. So what we found is that six blocks frailty symptom, and we give you some example. This is a movie in which we compare between 36 transgenic mice and white mm -hmm. little mice. The age of these mice, is, the minimum thing is 24 months. Some of them were even older. In human terms, it's meaning that the age was 80 years old. And we just followed the running of these mice. Remember, remember again, at age 80. You can see here that the transgenic mice keep running, whereas the normal or wild type animal don't move. In other words, what we show is that cells it's block the Friday syndrome, if you think in the practical terms, this is very important because Friday is one of the challenges that the NA decided to address in the next decade. So we have several questions. How should sex maintain higher activity at old age? And I will make a very long story short. We did all the metabolomics of uh, old mice. This is the liver, for example, and we also characterize the blood, we characterize what's happening in the, in the adipose tissue, so so And to sum it, if you can see, arrow show what is going up or going down with aging, dot show what's happening in Celtic over expression, you can see that basically it's reversing to young life metab metabolism in the liver. But it's not, it's not enough. But once you reverse it to young like metabolism, now we can produce energy either by this cycle or by other cycles that cells activate, and now you can get enough energy to be active even at old age. But it's not enough to have a better metabolism, you also need to, to see what's happening in the muscle. And we follow this I saw on the street on the, one of my morning running. And, and we ask, okay, what's happened to the muscle when you overexpress 36? Let me show you a few results because it's unpublished. For example, the level of cell 6 increase once you perform physical activity. Also, if you ask what is the outcome of this, it's active with AMPK, and AMPK is one of the targets of metformin. So basically by this, it's mimic the effect of metformin under uh, physical activity. So we know that cell 6 blocks the frailty just by changing the metabolism and change muscle activity. But how does cell 6 control longevity? So to answer it, we did a lot of experiments. Some of them I'm sure some are here because we, it's artist 2 suppressor, it's a person of mTOR like acropomycin, activate uh, replacing IGF-1, activate MPK, but is this enough? To answer it, what we did, we characterized all the target of cell 6 in the liver, within the body. So we asked which acetylated protein the articulation of the change because of cell 6. And if I will sum it, you can see it here. It probably doesn't tell you a lot because you see amino acid metabolism, ribosome activity, exosome. What is the story behind it? One of the main pathways that we found to be regulated by cell 6 was this pathway. Even for biologists, it's not a very common pathway. It's called the one carbon pathway, the transformation pathway. And we found that most of the enzyme in this pathway, you see it's circular that are circular regulated by 36. Why it's important? Because enzyme in this pathway create a gas, it's called H2S, and this H2S gas regulate, and this is a set of cell paper showing the cells that once you change H2S production, you now can mediate the effect of carbon restriction. 
So we asked what's happened to H2S production in 36 over expression. H2S is a gas that regulates the effect of carbon restriction. And here it's what's happened. So for example, when you compare what's happened to H2S production in normal wild type mice, it's reduced. What's happened in 36 over expression? In young mice, it's significantly higher. In old mice, it's much, even much higher. So even at old age, if you compare young mice to old transgenic mice, you see there is no difference in the H2S production. So Celtics maintain H2S production, and by this, get the effect of over, get, get the effect of color restriction. But the, the big question I think that all of us ask here, okay, so we spoke about mice, can we translate it into human, right? That's probably what I believe uh, most of the audience here ask themselves. So we established few years ago a company called Sertler, it's now, it came out of my lab, it's now in West Siona. I'm going to show you one of the results, or two results, in which we ask what will happen if we activate 36, not from birth, but we'll activate it later in life, and even under condition of NASH and under conditions of a healthy diet and diabetic mice. I'm going to show you two results, this is one of the results. For example, here we did, we did several models, this is the model of alpha diet that the mice develop they become diabetic and they develop fatty liver and so on. And we use a drug, for example, you can see the, the orange line is 36 or mice that were treated with a drug. The blue line are mice that were not treated by, by a drug. If you don't get 36 as a drug, you die. If you, only, if you activate 36, you survive. This is the simple lesson that come out of it. If you ask what's happened to the liver, how the liver is not, if you are a fan of uh, liver pictures, this is what, how it looks. This is how it looks a fatty liver after the treatment. You see it's, it says what is a fat on it, it says the beginning of tumor, so on. This is how the liver, even though after a short uh, treatment of 36, just remember we started not from the beginning. We gave the mice time to develop fatty liver, we gave the mice time to develop diabetic mice, and then we treated them with a drug, and it uh, restored normal liver. So we can save their life and we can restore the normal liver by using a drug that activates 36. And this is very important because we believe now that we will, what we check now is the effect on longevity in mice and the effect on the frailty in mice by using a drug. We finish here, we like to say, sorry, my groups, my, group, my, my students here are my group, and all the collaborators. And for all of you, thank you very much. somatic mutation analysis in the cystic transgenic or after your treatment, whether there's reduced accumulation of mutation? No, we will do it in Germany in Cologne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes. I'm interested to know if there are negative effects from increasing cystic. Okay. Is there a negative effect from increasing cystic? In the mice that were with cystic, we didn't find yet any negative effect. There are some evidence that cell 6 under some condition might uh, repress some, uh, I would say, let's say this. One way that maybe that we find some negative condition for cell 6, maybe under extreme inflammation, if it's block inflammation, we might want to have some level of inflammation. But yet, when we did it, we can see that cell 6, that cell 6, able to maintain the equilibrium of inflammation on one hand, it's regulate the secretion of an uh, inflammatory signal, and the other hand, it's repress the downstream signal on the DNA. So we didn't see it, but maybe in the natural condition, you need to repress the anti-inflammation activity of 36. I don't think so. I think that this is a very important activity of 36. We see in the brain, for example, in all of 36, actually it's block brain inflammation, chronic inflammation that you got in the brain. And it's important for all of us because once you block chronic inflammation in the hypothalamus, you extend the lifespan of mice by 10%. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry that we don't have uh, time for more than one or two questions for each uh, speaker.